Hey friends, welcome to my channel. In this video, I will use the painting behind me as a metaphor for life. So far, the journey of this painting has been everything but ordinary. It started in Santa Rosa, California. There I had a room and a studio set up that was just perfect, natural light for painting and filming. I had three canvases. I turned one of them into a floral composition and I painted it and I filmed it all in a couple of days. Then I started to paint this painting. I was inspired by the daisies outside my window and I started out doing a very vibrant version of the daisies. And before I knew it, unfortunately, I just ran out of certain paints and I had to stop and turn to the third canvas. And then what I did with that third canvas was I still was committed to painting the daisies, but I just had to go more into this monochromatic scale and just work with the white and the black and some of the little bit of colors that I had left and turn it into a version of the daisies. So then this painting I ended up taking with me to San Francisco and for the past couple weeks I've had the opportunity to stay in this space and I was able to build up a studio here. But before I did that I actually ended up taking it outside for some plain air painting. So how is this painting a metaphor for life. I'm going to start with the debate of nature versus nurture. It's a common debate in evolutionary psychology and it basically asks the question how much of who we are is inscribed in our gene and how much of it is just basically our environment in our life. The main equation there is that we are a product of gene environment interactions. Like a newborn, that is kind of like a blank slate. This painting started out as a blank canvas. Now, when you look at the canvas, it is not just exactly a completely black canvas. It already has certain characteristics, right? It is a certain size, it's a certain set of materials, and you know, it's intended for acrylic and oil painting. So it already has a certain physicality and it already has a certain intention and certain predispositions, right? It's predisposed to be turned into acrylic or oil painting. Similarly, a newborn already comes with a certain physique, for example, inscribed, right? Like how tall is it going to be now? It's going to be able to modulate that, of course, based on the gene environment interaction, like what type of food does the baby eat? What type of exercise does the baby do, etc. Obviously, when we're born, we're not born with wings, usually, right? Like, I mean, there's certain limitations. We don't have the capacity to do echolocation. We don't have the right sensors built in. They're not in our DNA. That's where the painting as a metaphor for life starts. Now, what gets interesting is that, so while it had certain potential in life to become something, right? Life turned some interesting turns <laughs> in its journey. It had a vision. I had a vision for it first. And it was the vision that I'm going to turn this blank canvas into a vibrant painting of daisies in Santa Rosa, California. I ran out of paints and time. I took it with me to San Francisco and I sat there for some time before. It was like really busy. And then finally I had some time on the Sunday last weekend and I was able to go outside and I decided, huh, the day before on Saturday, I was producing an apartment tour video. And for that, I had rented a DJI Ronin stabilizer for my camera that is currently sitting on a tripod. After filming indoors all day, I was very curious to kind of take it out for a spin outside, out in the wild. At the same time, I'm like, I have this painting. I want to try plain air painting. Maybe I should take it with me. And a friend also wanted to kind of join and we wanted to go out there and do some drone filming. All of that kind of coalesced together and we ended up going somewhere now. The vision for that day, for Sunday, was actually, hmm, I'm like, I want to be somewhere on a cliff, overseeing the beautiful ocean, you know, with like open white skies. 
it turned out to be a very windy day. But that's okay because after sort of dipping our toes in the water, we decided to come inside but stay close to the beach. Even there though, on a meadow with some trees, setting the canvas down on the ground against the bush. It was still windy, but it was doable. And we could still do these drone shots, right? That started there and kind of hover over to the ocean where you can see that I'm set up. Yes, I'm in a meadow, but I'm really close to the ocean. Now going back to the life lesson, I wanted to use the story that was already beginning to shape on the canvas, but I couldn't think a way to sort of apply it. So I ended up out there in nature, just painting over with white and starting over again. That's the first life lesson, that sometimes in life, these unforeseen situations happen that we need to start from scratch but that's okay the important thing is to have the resilience the adaptability to do that so those are important qualities to continuously nurture in ourselves as we go through life a good book that I read this year that kind of speaks to that is Mae Musk. She wrote a book called A Woman Makes a Plan. And in that memoir, she shares the story of how several times in her life she had to start over. She had to reopen and rebuild her practice as a dietitian in different cities and how you know, she had a plan every time she would make a plan, but oftentimes it would break down and she had to kind of adapt and figure things out from scratch. It's such a great story. I mean, by the way, May Musk is the mother of Elon Musk. So in her 20s, she had three kids, Elon, Kimball, and Tosca. And well, you know, unfortunately, she was in an abusive marriage and she had to run from her husband. I mean, she, it didn't stop at her just leaving. She had to basically keep moving and hide her addresses. And eventually she ended up in, in Canada, in Toronto, but along the side she had her practice as a dietitian and she was modeling also since a young age. But what's interesting is that it wasn't until she let her hair go gray, she, she calls it like silver, in her, I guess I think she was already in her 60s, she stopped coloring her hair. And that's seemingly something that oftentimes is seen as a disadvantage, right? Women's graying hair and wrinkles is a bad thing, actually turned to become her advantage and her strength. And that's where actually her career as a model a mature model took off. Great book, just uh, again, resilience, adaptability, and how sometimes you need to restart, and sometimes it's okay. One of the really uplifting and inspiring lessons from this memoir is actually that May says that her life, every decade, every year, has been getting better. But going back to the painting as a metaphor for life, I had to paint over and start over again. But if you think about it, this was an opportunity for the painting, for that blank canvas to start over and along the way to acquire the skill of adaptability and overcoming challenges. Painting this painting, I ran out of certain paints. And so similarly, sometimes we think in life, it's too late or I don't have the resources or, you know, let's say I want to do a career change or I want to advance in a certain way in my career, but I can't afford to take time off or only work part-time so I can do a certificate or another master's. Sometimes we, we, we kind of need to adapt and mold our life and work around what we have, right? Uh, you can't always just go 100% from scratch, but every time you're faced with a challenge, it is an opportunity for you to rethink and build a new vision and get going and start over. The important thing is not to allow that to crush you, to let you stop. The other thing that uh, May also mentions, the harder you work, the luckier you get. <laughs> so again, how important it is 
to just see a challenge as an opportunity to learn. So th this leads us to a couple of things. The one thing I would like to talk about, and it actually makes a lot of sense, it's very relevant right now for the current COVID-19 global pandemic that we're in right now. One of them is the diagram, so picture it as a diagram of a concentric circles of comfort, learning, and panic zones. Keep that in mind. And the other thing is that, the other important life lesson is that we do not find our passions, we create them. We do not just stumble onto skills, we learn them through, through learning and through practice. We acquire those skills. And so keeping that in mind, let's now move to that diagram. The painting obviously faced a challenging time. Out of paints and suddenly, you know, being painted all over, that was the only option was to start all over again. And the other thing is that it was also suddenly in this completely new environment, foreign environment, being outdoors in nature, from studio setting to being out in nature. But it found its way, I think. It restarted and then came back to the studio and it was able to continue to build and to evolve and to grow. And hopefully come out of it stronger, more vibrant and more resilient and acquiring this, these skills, essentially. So now we can move on to the diagram of comfort, learning and panic zones. So anytime something happens, to us on an individual level or on a global level. We usually find ourselves in one of those three zones. And right now, I would say, unless you're someone who is directly affected by coronavirus, the worst case scenario, of course, is being in a hospital, being on a ventilator, having a loved one or friend in that situation, or like losing livelihood, ending up on the street. Now, I would say, and I would probably think that a lot of you would agree that these kind of things, like if you lose your job, you end up on the streets, homeless for a little bit maybe, that's something that you at least have a chance to rebuild. But suffering and loss of life, that's final. So generally, I would say that overall, I've definitely encountered people and seen people who place themselves in the panic zone, even though I think they shouldn't be, and they unnecessarily kind of emotionally suffer because they just misplace themselves. I generally say that unless you are up there suffering fear of loss of life because you're hospitalized or something or loss of life, I mean, unless you're sort of in that category, you shouldn't place yourself in the panic zone. So you sh you're probably in the learning zone. When situations like that happen, they of course push us out of our comfort zone. And they push us to a learning zone. And that's the other important life lesson is, as we started sort of the nature-nurture debate, I acknowledge that some things are out of our hands. Like, I can't fly, I was not born with wings, right? Like certain things are inscribed, like the shape of the canvas, the size of the canvas. I, me, I came that way too and you came that way too. You, you are a certain way and that's already kind of set in stone. That's the nature part. But the nurture part is then what you do with that and sort of what environment you place yourself in. And again, the environment, some of it is in our hands and some of it is not. Like for example, we know that it's good to read to children, but generally we do not have a say in whether or not we're read to when we are children. And we know that of course, the kids that get read to are in that regard advantaged in life. But having said that, it doesn't mean that on if you count for every factor in somebody's life, the entire equation of somebody's life, that you know, just that is it's just one part of that equation. Going back to the learning zone, I would say that usually, mostly, we do want to find ourselves in the comfort zone. It's probably the best for our physical and mental health. 
But I would say there's, you know, everything within good measure. I think it's also healthy for us, for our mental and physical health, to occasionally be pushed into that learning zone. And sometimes we do that by choice, and sometimes it is not our choice. So when it is not our choice, it's important to look at it as an opportunity to learn. So that's the other big takeaway I hope you will take from this video, is that always ask when you're faced with a challenge, what is this challenge there to teach me? Your job, my job, our job is to always try to extract as many lessons as we can from every challenge we face. So of course now globally, we are facing challenges on an individual level, family level, community level, national level, global community level. And it is up to us to squeeze as many lessons out of it as we can. So take it as an opportunity. It is something that is out of our hands. What's interesting, it is a historic moment, quote unquote, unprecedented times, because for the first time in the history of humanity, we are facing an invisible enemy that is global. And so we have that global solidarity. And I do think that overall, of course, this is forcing us to think. And the other lesson in this situation is that whenever there's a challenge, especially of a large scale, there are always winners and losers. There are some people who, I'm not gonna say they're opportunistic, though that exists too in times like that. But there are people who, for example, they had some savings, and so they're going to be investing in real estate because it's down and this is a great time to invest in real estate or, you know, the stock market. And they will come out of this much better off than before. Now, you might not have savings to invest in real estate or the stock market, but there are many other things you can invest in. I know people are doing online courses, they are learning new skills, or you can do a lot of personal growth during this time. You can reflect and ponder and think about where you are in life and just reflect on your value system and what actually matters in life. Those are already really good lessons. And then of course, using the painting as a metaphor, it's a great visual representation of the journey of life and how from birth to every decade in our lifetime, there are certain things that are in our control and certain things that are not in our control. And when things are taken away from you, like the fact that we right now can control and don't have a choice, we have to be sheltered in place, we, we have to work from home, we can also like extract lessons from that. Again, going back to the winners and losers, some people have the choice of investing in real estate and the market right now. There are already winners that we see, companies like Zoom and Netflix, they are doing better than ever. And of course, others that are suffering. These kind of times place us in this pressure cooker. But it is for us to kind of use this time to level up in life as much as we can. And a good book, I know that it's been uh, sort of trending, it's gained an even more popularity during this time, is Viktor Frankl's Men's Search for Meaning. And this is a small book, but just a must read. So if you haven't already, I really encourage you to read it. While I liked May Musk's book, I would not include it in you know, must reads books. I wouldn't say it doesn't make my top 25 books. Let's just say that. Versus Viktor Frankl, I would probably include in my 25 books. And basically this is a story of him where he ends up in a concentration camp and everything is taken away from him. Everything. I mean, every possible way somebody can be tortured physically, emotionally. He goes through that. But what he learns and he teaches through writing this book and his story is that the one thing that nobody can take from you, no matter how grave the situation, 
is your sort of view of this situation. When he was there and everything was taken from him, he did not give up the last power, the last straw of power he had, which was like, I'm not gonna play victim. I'm not gonna victimize myself. I'm not gonna let this crush me. I will find purpose in the suffering. And that's what he did. He found purpose in his suffering. He found purpose in surviving. He set his mind to, I'm gonna survive this. This is just a phase. This is not the end. So the lesson there is that this time right now, this is our purpose, is to overcome this and come out stronger as individuals, as communities, and especially as a diverse, inclusive, global community. Before I go, I'm going to pretend that I got a question from the audience and the question goes, what inspired you to create this video? My answer is that when I took the painting outdoors last weekend for some drone videography and playing around with the DJI Ronin S that I had borrowed for that weekend and I was painting the painting over with white, I started to think of it as a metaphor for life. And both from personal experience and from experiencing Weltschmerz, that's a perfect German word, look it up, Weltschmerz, I just learned that it is very beneficial to have a framework. When you are dealing with novel situations, with challenging situations, with loss and suffering, it is a lot to handle. And so it's really good to have a framework where you sort of can attach things and that way you can more smoothly sort of ride these turbulent times. So I found this useful to think of the painting as a metaphor for life and how it is never too late to start over, paint over with white. If you run out of certain colors, find different colors to paint with. If a certain vision for your life doesn't work out, build, create a new vision for your life. And that you have the potential to build resilience in you and strength and adaptability. And so do that. And when you're faced with a challenge, ask yourself, what is this challenge there to teach me? And realize that in every adverse situation, there are winners and losers. And ask yourself, how can you be a winner? Okay, maybe you don't have any savings to invest in the real estate market or certain stocks, but what are other ways you can win? So use this time to squeeze out as many lessons as you can, you know, to maybe come out out of the situation stronger than you were ever before. So I found in the past few days thinking of this painting as a metaphor for life, useful. And I hope you will find it useful as well. I hope this pretend question from the audience inspired you to ask your own question. So head on over to the comment section below and ask away. Also, I would like to invite you to find me on Instagram and send me a direct message. I would love to hear from you and connect with you there. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up and if you look around my channel and you like what you see, please subscribe. I would love to see you again. Until next time, I hope. Bye guys.